and I will begin to show you that all that I have for you is more than a world against you. And I will begin to bring you into places that you have never been. For I've seen the pain of those that have been across the desert. I have looked into the hourglass of time and I have seen the muddy waters within the waters. I have seen the life of those that have drowned in the boat. And I will begin to show you that in this season and in this day, that there will be nothing that will hinder my people. And the things that have caused pain and the things that have caused shame, I will begin to do what no one else can do. And you will begin to see people across the nation. Those that were in high places, their schedules will slow down. And you will begin to say, ah, what happened to them? For they were of renown. But I'll begin to raise a new generation. Not a generation of age, but a generation of those that have been on the backside of the desert. I'll begin to talk to those that have been here. I'll begin to talk to those that have been lost. And I'll begin to do what no one else can do. I'll show you the power that is within my hand. I'll begin to look again into the sky and see those that have flown around the country. And I will bring you into a place that you've never been before. For these are the days of discovery. And these are the days that I'll begin to show you who I am, saith the Lord of hosts. I want to share something with you this morning. This is Friday morning. And every Friday morning for the past year, what we have done, have we have made a decision. And the decision that we have made is to walk in the prophetic, to walk with God, to live with God, to flow with God. And so this morning, as the Lord was releasing me to release a word to you this morning, I want you to go into the book of Samuel, the book of 1 Samuel. And God began to speak to me this morning. And I'm going to share with you what the Lord has shared with me. I want you to go to the book of 1 Samuel. And he said, Now there was a certain woman, man, a Ramazid, of Mount Ephraim, named Elkanah, the son of Johan. Verse 2. And he had two wives, Hannah and Peninnah. And this man went up out of the city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Zion. God began to show me this morning that Elkanah had two wives. And these two wives, one was fruitful and one was barren. And within your life, you've been barren. Within your life, you've been fruitful. But God is going to show you how to produce fruit in this season. And as we go on, it says in verse 5, But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion. For he loved Hannah, but God had shut up his womb. There are a lot of people whose wombs are shut up. There are a lot of people who don't know what to do or how to do it or where to go or what to do. And God is about to release to them, as I was prophesying this morning, I began to see a bucket of water. And as I looked into the water, 
I saw ships that were sinking. As I was prophesying this morning, I began to look into the bucket of water. And I began to see boats that had been drowned. People that had died in the water. But can I tell you that God is about to release a water with on the people. There is going to be such a degree of promotion this year than any other year. Because this is the year of release. Hannah needed a release. Hannah was provoked by Panina. And when you look at verse 7, and as he did so yearly by year, 1 Samuel chapter 1, she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her, and therefore she wept and did not eat. A lot of times you don't want to eat because you're in mourning, you're, you're in weeping, you're in a place that you don't want to be. But I'm here to tell you this morning that God is going to release something to you that you don't know. God is going to do something for your life that you're not familiar with. And God is going to do it. God is going to get the credit. Nobody else is going to get the credit. Nobody else is going to be able to take the credit for you. But God is going to do it. And that's how God dealt with Hannah. Even though Elkanah gave her a portion, a worthy portion... And Elkanah gave Panina, gave Panina a portion. And the portion that Panina was given was different from the portion that Hannah was given. I'm here to tell you that God is going to release something to you. I'm here to tell you that God hasn't forgotten about you. I'm here to tell you that there is something on the horizon for you in your life on this prophetic Friday. It's prophetic Friday. It's prophetic Friday. It's a prophetic Friday and it's a prophetic release. All year 2017, it's a prophetic release. And God is going to begin to show you that he's going to release you from certain things in your life that have harmed your life. Pena Panina constantly aggravated Hannah. Verse number eight. Then said Elkanah, her husband to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? Why are you not eating? And why is your heart grieved? Aren't I not better than two sons? In other words, there are certain things in your life that you have need of. There are certain things in your life that you desire. There are certain things in your life that you want. And no matter what somebody do, these are the desires of your heart. Hannah had a desire. God put a desire on Hannah and said, Hannah, I want you to birth me a child. And for years, Hannah was barren. And finally, Hannah came to a place in her life where she realized, God, if you don't release it, it won't be released. It's not going to come from people. It's not going to come from your job. But God is going to release it. And the only way that Hannah could be pregnant was that God opened her womb. I'm here to tell you tonight that God is going to open the church womb. God is going to open the womb of the church and the church is getting ready to give birth. For years we've talked about and, and grieved and wept and been in mourning, but our tears are coming to an end. Glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Somebody need to get some tissue this morning. You need to get some tissue and wipe your eyes. You need to get some tissue and stop crying. You need to get some tissue because you've been on your knees. You, 
You've been wondering what you need to do. You've been, you've been crying out to God. You've been, you've been weeping. You've been frustrated. You, you've been embarrassed about certain things. And there are certain things you don't know what to do. But I'm here to tell you this morning, get you some tissue. Wipe your eyes this morning. Clear your heart. Clear your mind. Clear your spirit. Clear everything that you've been going through. Clear everything that you've been doing. Clear it up. God is about to wipe your eyes. God is about to dry your lips. And God is about to do something in your life that you thought he couldn't do. Hannah thought that God had forgotten her. Hannah began to say, verse 9, So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shalon, and after they had drunk. Now Eli, the priest, sat upon a seat by the post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O oh Lord, O oh God, Remember, Hannah was weeping. Hannah was, in, Hannah was in mourning. Hannah was in crying. Hannah was in pain. Hannah was in suffering. Hannah was in misery. But I'm here to tell you that Hannah went before the priest. And Hannah made a vow. Glory to God. Hannah made a vow. Hannah made a vow. I'll tell you. Hannah made a vow. She made a vow to God. She knew where her favor was. She knew where her prosperity was coming from. Hannah knew what to do. She knew that favor with God was the greatest harvest that she could ever receive. Hannah knew that favor was going to determine the level of her life. She knew that favor was going to come from God and that she knew that God was going to give her favor. She knew that favor of God was going to show up in her life. And she knew that because she associated with God, she loved God, that favor was going to bring the right situation, the right circumstance in her life. Hannah was preparing for God's favor. Hannah was preparing for something that she had never prepared for in her life. She was preparing for God's answer. Can I tell you, I want you to get ready today and prepare for God's answer. God is about to answer you. God is going to answer the question. God is going to deliver you from what you've been going through. God is going to bring you to a place that you've never been before. I said God. Hannah said in verse number 10, 1 Samuel 1, verse 10, and she was in bitterness. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Let me ask you something, church. Have you ever been in bitterness? Have you ever been bitter against someone? Have you ever been bitter against a situation, against a circumstance against a problem. Have you ever been bitter? In other words, she was angry. Hannah was discontent. Hannah was heavy. Hannah was feeling the pain of life. Have you ever felt the pain of life? Glory to God. Have you ever felt the pains of life? Let's look at this some more. Verse 10, and she was in bitterness. She was in the pains of life in her soul. And she prayed unto the Lord. And she wept unto the Lord. And she vowed a vow and said, O oh Lord of hosts, if you would look on my affliction and remember your handmaid. Have you ever really cried to God? Hannah 
was in a place where she was crying to God. Hannah was in a place where she, she was upset. Hannah was in a place she, she didn't know what to do. She didn't know where to go. She didn't have no friends that could help her. But Hannah cried to God. Would you cry to God this morning? Would you pour your heart to God? Would you, would you give your life to God? Would, would you allow God to, to be a part of your life? Would you allow God to come into your life? Would you allow God? Would you allow God this morning? Would you allow God this morning? Would, would, would you allow God to move? She said in, in, in verse number 11, and, and she vowed a vow. She, she went within herself. And she began to realize that there was something in her life that she needed. She began to realize that there was, there was something that she needed to do to get God's attention. She began to realize that, that, that if I could make strike a bargain with God. She, she said, God, I, I want to make a vow. I, I want to do something. I, 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 I want to make you a promise that, that I'm going to do something. But I need you to do something. And Hannah began to cry out, and, and, and she said, she made a vow. She said, Lord, have you ever been in a place in your life where you just said, Lord? Where you just cried out, Jesus? Where you just, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And she began to go deep. She said, God, she, Hannah tapped into her own pain. Hannah uh, tapped into her own frustration. Hannah tapped into the thing that was bothering her the most. She said, if you would indeed look. She said, God, there, there, there's something I want you to look at. She said, God, I need, I need you to look at this situation. This is what Hannah said to God. She said, God, I need you to look at this. There, there's some things going on I want you to look at. I, I, I need you to look. Now look at the word that Hannah used. She said, look on my affliction. Glory to God. In other words, she said, God, I need you to look at my misery. God, I, 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 I need you to look at my depression. God, I need you to look at my trouble. Hannah was reaching God in a way that she had never tapped into God before. I'm here to tell you that this is a season that God going to give you some tissue. God going to let you dry your lips and Dry your eyes because the season of weeping is over. <laughs> Glory to God. The thing that you have cried for, the thing that you have begged God to do, the problem, the, the misery, the, the affliction, the, the trouble, the depression, God going to tell you, to, I'm going to fix it. And she said, God, look. In other words, she said, God, can, can you, now watch this, now, can you see this thing? Hannah to begin to ask God, God, can you see this thing? Sometimes we feel as if God doesn't see. Sometimes we feel as if God isn't there. But Hannah began to say, God, I need you to see. I need you to appear. I need you to provide. I need you to regard me. I need you to imply. I need you to reply to my situation. I need you to talk to my trouble. I need you to feel my pain. And God steps down out of glory. Mm. And God comes 
into a place, into a covenant with Hannah. And God began to show Hannah that, Hannah, I have heard your affliction. And listen, it says, look, Hannah began to say, God, look at your handmaid. Glory to God. God, look at the trouble that I've been in. God, look at the problems that I've been in. God, look, give me a man child. What is it in your life that you want God to give you? Hannah wanted God to give her a man child. What is it in your life that you want God to give you? Get one thing in your mind right now, and I want you to believe God for that one thing. Just one great thing. Mm. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Hannah began to believe God for one great thing. And the thing that Hannah began to believe God for was going to change a nation. The thing that Hannah begin to believe God for was going to change the world. The thing that God was going to give Hannah was going to work for Hannah and work for God. Mm. Can I tell you that God is about to release? This is the year of release. 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 God is going to do a prophetic release. God gave Hannah a prophetic release. God came into Hannah's life and gave her a prophetic release. God heard Hannah's prophetic cry. Oh, get your tissue, get your tissue, dry your eyes. Stop weeping, stop crying, get your tissue, get your tissue. Because God is going to give you a prophetic release. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm, mm, mm. My God, my God. I want you to get ready. I want you to get ready today. And I want you to believe God for your success. Listen. This is Prophet Calvin Brown. Today is Prophetic Friday. Miss Perry, I'm going to pray for you. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up Miss Perry right now. I pray, Lord God, that you would bring this woman into a place that she's never been before. That, that you would bring Miss Perry, the breakthrough in, in her condition. I hear the Lord saying, in your condition, Miss Perry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring you through. I'm going to bring you out. In, in the problem, I'm going to bring you out. In, in your circumstance, I'm going to bring you out. I, I'm going to begin to release to you some things. Mm -hmm. Hold your hands up, Miss Perry. I hear God saying, prophesy to that woman's hands. I'll prophesy to your hands, Miss Perry, that what you touch, woman, God bless her hands, bless her hand, what you touch. You're going to begin to see some things that when you put your hand to them, the prosperity is going to be there. The prosperity is going to be there. The prosperity is going to be there. I want you to get ready, everybody, because starting Monday, 21 days of fasting and prayer. No face but God's face. 21 days of no meat. The Daniel's fast starting Monday. The Daniel's fast. So get your mind together. Get your heart together to do the Daniel's fast in January the 26th, 27th, 28th. The prophetic the Imagination Mentoring Conference. Get ready. This is Prophetic Friday. Those of you 
that are here. Let me show you a letter that I just got. <laughs> this is a letter, a handwritten letter. Glory to God. I just thank God. This is a handwritten letter that I got from my prophet. Look at that. Look at that. The prophet told me, when you people that sow the 217 and the 2017, he said, this is going to be a year that you'll never forget. The prophet said, I don't know if I could get that close enough to you to see where he signed it right here. The master prophet sent me this personal letter. The master prophet sent me the mantle. I want to thank each and every one of you today. And those of you, you need a prophetic impartation. You need a prophetic impartation. You need a prophetic activation. Go to the website, jforhim.org. There it is right there. I didn't even know that. Partner, plant your seed. Have a blessed day. Good day. Good morning, Eddie. Good morning, Linda. Those of you that are on Facebook, good morning to you. I pray that you would have a blessed day and that your day would be encouraged and that you would walk in the faith of God. Have a blessed day. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah.